Many theological discussions, teachings, and debates use phrases like the Bible says or God says. And the Bible says, Isaiah the prophet said, there is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Because he said to Moses, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. God said in the book of Exodus, I have seen the affliction of my people. He says in his word, I am God. The Bible says that God is sitting upon the throne. God says, my spirit on all flesh. And that's why the New Testament says you cannot, these are the words of Jesus, serve God and money. God's ways, the Bible says, are not given to men who do not know him. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It reminds me of that passage in Psalms chapter 2 where it says, Why are From a technical point of view, the problem with these statements is that it assumes the Bible was written in English, which of course we all know is not true. The Bible does not say, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The more accurate statement would be, The Bible says, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz which is often translated and interpreted as in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. While this may sound trivial, it is in fact a very important issue as many theological differences, divisions, and arguments are based on faulty interpretations of the text that could easily be resolved by examining the original language. Once the Hebrew text is recognized, its meanings and interpretations can then be discussed properly. As an example, the Hebrew word reshit, often translated as beginning in Genesis 1 verse 1, can be used for the beginning of an event, but it can also be used for the best of something, such as we see in Numbers 18.12. All the fat of the oil and all the fat of the wine and wheat, the best of them, which they will give to Yahweh for a gift. Also, the Hebrew word bara does not mean create. In fact, you can see the same word being translated more accurately and literally in 1 Samuel 2.29, where the King James Version reads, making yourselves fat. The Hebrew word translated as fat here in this verse is the very same Hebrew word translated as create in Genesis 1.1. Rather than attempting an interpretation from the English, one should at least be attempting to understand the text from its Hebraic origin. Through the use of an English Bible and a concordance, the student is able to find the Hebrew word used in the text that lies behind the English. When using this tool, it quickly becomes evident that the English translators of the text were not very consistent in how they translated Hebrew words. For instance, the Hebrew word nefesh is usually translated in the King James Version and other versions as soul. But in the King James Version, this is also translated as appetite, beast, body, breath, creature, dead, desire, ghost, heart, life, lust, man, mind, person, pleasure, self, thing, and will. The Hebrew verb nantan means to give, but is often translated as Add, allow, apply, appoint, ascribe, assign, avenge, bestow, bring, cast, cause, charge, come, commit, consider, count, cry, deliver, direct, distribute, do, fasten, forth, frame, get, grant, hang, have, heal, heed, lay, leave, left, lend, let, lift, make, occupy, offer, ordain, over, oversight, pay, perform, place, plant, pour, present, print, 
pull, put, recompense, requit, restore, send, set, shoot, show, sing, sit, slander, strike, submit, suffer, take, thrust, tie, trade, turn, utter, weep, willingly, withdraw, would, yell, and yield. While it is true that one English word cannot translate one Hebrew word perfectly, and some translational liberties are necessary, this should only be done out of necessity and the change should be noted in a footnote to aid the student with proper understanding and interpretation.